Good evening, everyone. I'm Chief Meteorologist here in Aries here in the KSAN Storm Team Weather Center, and I want to dive in a little bit deeper on Hurricane Sally. We've talked about it during the newscast just briefly, but I want to dive in a little bit deeper for those of you that might be interested in this storm and the impacts that will be felt along the central portions of the Gulf of Mexico. Let's get right to it. This is Hurricane Sally on the satellite imagery right here. Pretty impressive. And we're talking about a storm that rapidly intensified today. It went from a tropical storm. We were talking about tropical storm Sally this morning to at 11 o'clock this morning a category one storm with 90 mile per hour winds now we're talking about a category two storm with 100 mile per hour winds and that just goes to show you the effects of the warm sea surface temperatures here in the Gulf of Mexico which is what these storms thrive off of that's where they get their energy from are those warm sea surface temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico being shallow is notorious for having those really warm sea surface temperatures and really good energy for these storms to tap into. The problem with this storm is, for a problem for the storm is, is that this storm is moving west-northwest at around five miles per hour right now. That's about the speed you would drive through a parking lot um, at the grocery store or something like that. That's about the speed you would be driving through um, a parking lot with a lot of cars and a lot of people going back and forth. But needless to say, the storm isn't moving very fast, so it's kind of sitting over the same areas. And that leads to a phenomenon that we call upwelling. And what that is is basically the bottom cooler water on the bottom of the sea or the ocean tends to get churned up by these storms. And when they sit there for a long time, they start to churn up a whole lot of water. And when they do that, that cooler temperature comes to the surface of the sea or the ocean and therefore you get cooler temperatures at the surface and that tends to cut off that energy supply for this storm that could cause the storm to weaken but as of now this storm is still forecasted to be a category 2 hurricane and make landfall somewhere between Mississippi coastal Mississippi and coastal Alabama. So talking about a category, a strong category two storm, maybe even potentially a category three storm winds of 110 miles per hour as it comes ashore here along portions of the central Gulf Coast. Already seeing Sally show up on the local radar here. We're already seeing some of these bands show up on the radar here out in the Gulf of Mexico. Some heavy bands out in the Gulf of Mexico and even noticing what looks like an eye starting to form here on the radar imagery that empty space that little donut hole that you see is the what's likely the eye of the storm there as that's taken shape here in the radar imagery over the past three hours here let's take a look at those weather alerts for the coastal areas of the central gulf coast hurricane warnings posted from portions of louisiana portions of mississippi portions of coastal alabama all the way to portions of the pan panhandle of florida santa rosa county florida you're under this hurricane warning until seven o'clock on thursday dealing with a hurricane likely coming through this area. Tropical storm warnings posted for inland areas of Alabama, Mississippi, and even Louisiana until Thursday at 7 o'clock, including even portions of the Florida Panhandle as well for that tropical storm warning. So many alerts up across the area, and it's not just the winds that we're going to be dealing with with this storm, but we're also going to be dealing with a flooding potential. We've got a really slow moving storm. This is the forecasted rainfall from the European model all the way through Friday evening. And we're talking about double digit rainfall potentials here in Mobile, Gulf Shores, all the way to Destin. And again, these numbers are going to shift and adjust as the days go along as we get a better idea of where this storm is actually going to go. So your totals may go down, your totals may go up, depending on where this storm actually tracks. But as of now, we're looking at a storm that's going to track somewhere between Mississippi, coastal Mississippi, and coastal Alabama bringing the bulk of that rainfall to portions of coastal Alabama and to portions of the Florida Panhandle dealing with quite a bit of rainfall. And then take a look at the wind gust speeds here across the area. 79 miles per hour at Gulf Shores. And again, this is a model. It's taking snapshots. It's not getting like real-time 
uh, real-time data shown there. It's a snapshot, usually every few hours, showing you um, snapshots of what is to come. If it was real-time, we'd see numbers a little bit higher than that. Again, we've got forecasted numbers um, for wind speeds from the National Hurricane Center, expecting wind speeds to be upwards of 110 miles per hour as this thing nears the coastline. So we could be talking about much higher wind gusts here as this storm moves into the area. And this this too could change depending on where exactly this storm tracks. So let's go ahead and take a look at those forecasted tropical tracks. There you go. Most of these models have a consensus here of from west of Biloxi, Mississippi to east of Mobile, Alabama making a landfall. Again, these models track out where the center is likely to travel. And so we're looking at the most likely impact here from this storm somewhere from between Biloxi, Mississippi to eastern portions of Mobile, Alabama. So you need to be prepared for this storm to come through over the next few days if you're in those areas. And again, if you know people, give them a phone call, let them know what's coming their way, give them a heads up, let them know that they're going to be experiencing a very strong Category 2 hurricane at the least here as the storm gets ready to move through the area over the next several days. This is going to be a long duration event here up along coastal portions of Alabama, Mississippi, and the Florida Panhandle. I'm not going to go too much more in depth with this. I'm going to leave it right here. And if you want more information, you can check out WKRG in Mobile, Alabama. They are our sister station and they will be doing coverage on this storm throughout the days ahead. So you can check out information from them. Again, WKRG in Mobile, Alabama. For now, I'm going to sign off and I will see you guys at 10 o'clock tonight. Have a great night.